Ceiling valve, gently bite the tip of the valve with the front teeth, start water flow, anti blah blah blah. Oh, there we go. Just like the other one, you gotta pull down it. See that? No sloshy sound because there's no air in it. So that's good. One thing I did not cover on the last video because I never used the water. This running jacket does come with an insulated sleeve in it. It'll keep the water cold. And it does have the valve at the bottom. Now, ironically, this really doesn't matter right now because I have warm water in here because, well, my daughter drank all my Gatorades. But if you're a parent, you know what that's like. So, yeah. Definitely add some weight to this bad boy. So I guess we're gonna take this guy down the right shoulder. The uh, two days ago I was running in this thing and I was able to get the chest straps cinch down a lot more so either I am losing weight or <laughs> this thing stretching out. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Bad guy in a little coat. Bad guy in a little coat. Don't. <laughs> Bad guy in a little coat. Bad guy in a little coat. But we'll have more on that later. So I don't know how this guy's gonna work. I'm gonna put him over here. This was also going to be the first time I carried a GoPro with me because I usually record on my phone. And I don't know if I'll have room in my vest to do it comfortably. So we'll have to see. Let's figure out what we're going to do. About a mile and a quarter in. Uh, since it is a weekend and I didn't have the opportunity to walk or lunch, I've been taking the first two miles very slow. I'm doing a lot of walking, not so much running, just to get my plantar fasciitis kind of stretched out and worn in. I'm planning on once I start mile three to do more consistent running. Um, Thursday night, yeah, Thursday night I did run a non stop mile. Well, almost a non stop mile. I did get under 13 minutes, which is cool. But we're not worried about speed today. Today we're focusing on distance. My goal is another half marathon. Uh, it depends on how I feel and the overwhelming desire of all the other things I need to do. So the other probability of that is time. I'm not gonna to try to focus on that so much. Um, I do have to go pick up my tuxedo tonight for my sweating, but they don't close until nine. And I think it's only 1.49 right now. So I guess if I'm home by three or so, 
I'll feel good about it, which gives me about another hour, hour and a half. I don't know, we'll just play it by ear and see. Um, this is the first time I've carried this camera and putting it in here. It's actually nice and secure with the tripod. So the tripod goes down here, camera sits up here, bounces a little bit, I don't feel it. First time wearing the water bladder with the hose, I don't know that that is the proper routing for it, but once again, I don't feel it, so that's cool. I think when it comes to running gear, running gear you don't feel, running gear you don't notice, is very important. If you can feel your gear, like your running belt, the one I have on back here that I have my phone in, if you can feel your vest, like my glasses I can feel, which is not a good thing, because by the end of this run, because of the pressure from my sleeves, I'll have a slight headache behind my ears just from the pressure of my glasses. But if I put my glasses on top of my sleeves, they feel funny. And the primary reason I'm wearing the sleeves is to keep my Raycons from falling out. I don't care what earbud manufacturers tell you. Yes, they come with four or five different earpieces. My ears don't fit any of those gauges. So I find the closest one, I shove it in there. And if you ever notice when I run, whether it's with a sock hat, you won't see me running with a baseball cap because I try putting a baseball cap over the sleeve and it just feels dumb and looks dumb. And I don't mind looking dumb, but I don't want to look dumb if it doesn't feel good. So anyhow, back to this vest. Very low, low end entry level running vest. With the caveat being that I haven't run with it with a shirt off yet because I just recently got it and it's been cold and windy. To be honest with you, if the sun was out, I'd probably take the shirt off, which is nice because it does have the pack system. So if I do get hot, I can peel the shirt off. But as of right now, I, this doesn't wear me in any places. I have not developed any sort of rash or wear points from wearing the vest with a shirt on. Um, with the water back air, I feel no bouncing. It actually feels nice. It's more kind of a hugging sensation almost. I actually think the pack fits better with the water bladder filled up because it kind of pulls things down to where it's supposed to be. Whereas when you're running with it empty, it kind of scrunches up, thus giving you the too small feeling. So I kind of enjoy it with the water pack in the back. But uh, yeah, I'm not even at mile two yet. So once you get to mile two, that's when I really want to start. Actually, it's a lie. About mile three, when we get there, I'm sorry. Yeah, at mile th one and three quarters. So I am going to stop that gas station down there, get some more um, Tylenol and Gatorade. I want to put some Gatorade in this one. And uh, then I'm going to start from my main run. So right now I'm still walk running, trying to break my feet in, if you will the joys of getting old and when I return shortly we'll talk about the scale and how the scale okay just hit lap two mile two was 1607 I think mile one was 1535 so went a little slower mile two I'm breaking my feet in but when I return we'll talk about the scale and how it broke my motivation I'm at mile 654. I haven't checked in with you guys in a while because something I've been waiting to happen has happened. It hasn't happened in a long time. How many happens can it happen to happen say in one time? Anyhow, what happened to happen was got in the zone, locked in, found my gait, found my pace, found my rhythm, got onto that brink of disconnecting my mind, never fully disconnected. I did get to the point where I could ignore the pain in my feet. So I just, I didn't want to slow down and stop running to film. I finally waited until I said, okay, I gotta do a little walking. So anyhow, we'll uh, keep on trucking. I'm gonna try to get 10, 13 miles in today. I haven't decided yet. 
We'll see. So, it's 3.30. I'm going to head back towards the house. I was really hoping to get in 12 miles today, but I got two of a late start. Slept in, put blackout curtains in my room. That's a game changer. I'm part time sleeping on the weekends, trying to recharge up for the week. I do so much during the week that I allow myself to sleep in on Saturday, but by the time I got up, got bagels for the whole house to eat for lunch, and got ready to start the clock. It was only 1 30. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up and head towards the house. So I'm here, taking up the truck seat, I'm going to shower, obviously, I'm going to do that. So it's going to be about nine, nine and a quarter miles for today's run. I think it still qualifies as a long run, so we'll check this good. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube will not let you know because they're putting all their money in their shorts. I upload a short and get 2,000 views a day. Put up a long form video like this. Their algorithm doesn't push it, and my views are through the floor. So turn on the notification bell if you enjoy this content, and uh, check back with you soon. What's up y'all? It is uh, Wednesday night. I did not run yesterday. I um, did, did two miles at work yesterday. Couldn't do two miles at work today because I had to go take care of some computer stuff. Monday I did not run it at all. No, I did two miles at work Monday. Didn't run at night because I had a podcast to do. But I did run nine miles on Sunday. First mile tonight was three minutes or something. Now I am about a mile and a half, mile three quarters into it, and I started getting lazy legs. You've got that lazy gait where you realize you're basically just shuffling, you're not lifting your feet up at any true altitude, you're just shuffling your feet, it's a fast pace. Well, I did that back here, and I stubbed my toe when I just caught my face. Well, not stubbed my toe, but I, my foot hit a piece of sidewalk, and I fell forward, but I caught myself and kept running. However, now, in my left shoe, I feel something sharp. I don't feel any pain in my toe, but I feel something sharp rolling around my sock. So I think I'm out of toe now. I really don't want to pull over and take my shoe and my sock off. This thing is sharp and it's rolling around. Right now, it's underneath the arch of my foot. So sadly, I might have to put a pause in my run take my damn shoe and sock off when I hear the light to see if in fact I didn't lose a toenail and if it's rolling around in my sock so hold tight. Now I did stop my watch for this. I think I might have lost a toenail. The good news is I've always heard people do that on long runs. So I wonder if it's painful. Let's see if maybe she's stuck in her shoe. I thought one if maybe it's painful. If I did the back there's a toenail. I did not. Maybe I just broke it. Though. Maybe I just broke one off. I don't see anything hanging in my shoe. Only thing I can think of is maybe I chipped it off. But yeah, I'm gonna put my fucking gross ass sock back on. Actually, to be honest, it's not even that gross because I haven't been running that far. I do have a sharp edge, just got snagged, so. Maybe I did break things somewhere. At least now I can finish my run without the pain. Not the pain of the broken toenail, but the pain of the toenail digging in the bottom of my foot. Um, before I start running again. Earlier in the video I said that I got on the scale and it killed me. When I did this in my 30s, I was on the scale every morning. Counting every calorie burnt, every calorie put in. I'm doing that now. I'm, I'm logging on my food. I am keeping a conscious eye. For example, today for lunch I just had a Caesar salad of raw black coffee all day. I uh, got home, I did have one Fanta with my dinner, which was, um, and yeah, some pasta, which had some carbs. But anyhow, back to the subject at hand. I got on the scale last Wednesday, and it said I'm 244 
When I started this, I was at 238, and that's what made me get back. That being called fat, I believe people had not seen me in a year. It's the last time they saw me. It was when I was training for all my OCR stuff actually two years ago. So anyhow, I've put in, as of Saturday, I've put in 72 miles for the month. Probably closer to 80 or 82 now. I'll have to check after I make this video. But I put in 82 miles for the month. Cut my carbs out. I'm not buying candy anymore. Cut my Starbucks out, except for now I have it twice a week instead of daily. And I'm putting on weight. But my ring's loose. My clothes are loose. So I think my quads, my calves are just getting bigger. I think I'm putting on muscle mass. But sadly, I'm not losing enough of my fat. Just on the scale the other way. So we're just gonna keep working on it. That's why I only get on the scale once a month, once every two weeks, so I'm not taking no big myself. What's up, kid? Problem. I'm I'm expecting between the ranges of like a hundred. Yeah, she's not lying. I went to put the deposit down on this guy. Two hundred and sixty-five bucks. The last wedding I went to, hundred dollars. If you guys have been on TikTok for any amount of time, you've all seen the videos where the girl discovers her dress has pockets. We got one better. <laughs> I learned today that tuxedos have thumb holes in the pocket so that when guys put their hands in their pockets, I mean, can't, you can't, tell. can't see, but uh, you don't have to cram your hand in there. I want thumb pockets in all my trousers. Thumb pockets? Thumb pockets. Thumb pockets. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>